Hey guys, welcome back to the course. So in this lecture, we're gonna talk about the relationship between price and autonomy when you're hiring a contractor or an outsourced freelancer. So this is actually just a quick video. I wanna introduce a concept that uh, once I kind of understood this, it really helped me wrap my head around what's a good bid, what should I expect, um, and what's an efficient kind of route to take when I look at the freelancers um, that are giving me proposals. Now, you've probably noticed right off the bat, there is gonna be like a smorgasbord of different prices from different freelancers. Obviously, the price depends on a lot of different things, and you can obviously tell very quickly that place, uh, people who are bidding from, say, the United States are going to bid higher than someone who's bidding from, say, Sri Lanka. So it's obvious that the country of origin makes a big deal in price. There's also a lot of other factors that go into it. We're gonna talk a little bit more in depth in the next lecture about the factors that go into pricing and what you should kind of understand. So when someone says this is gonna take me $20 an hour or you know $200 for your project, there's a lot that's codified into that and you need to break it down to actually understand where you can find cost savings, but also understand whether or not you're getting a good deal. Now, the concept of autonomy is very important when it comes to freelancers. You want your freelancer to be as autonomous as possible. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that um, if your freelancer or your firm runs into a problem, how uh, capable are they of solving that problem? Now, you might think to yourself, I have made my specification sheets and my instructions perfectly. There's no way they're gonna run into issues. I have everything planned out. Okay, that's just flat out not true. Um, even professionals, even companies that have been outsourcing for 20 years, they still run into issues um, and they still run into problems that they could not possibly have foreseen when they wrote their spec sheets or when they originally posted their job. Just a general rule of thumb is that you should expect issues. Any little technical bug, any clarification issue, any type of, say, even like if you're uh, outsourcing your marketing, a response that you didn't expect from a potential customer or really kind of any issue, infrastructure issues, um, issues getting gaining access to the accounts you give them. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong. Now, what you need to understand about autonomy and how this relates to price is that the more you pay, the more likely your freelancer is going to be capable of solving their own problems on their own without help from you. So let's take a, an Indian web developer as an example. An Indian web developer that lives outside of a big city that has been working for, let's say, four to five years, and they do primarily, let's say, JavaScript and PHP. That person could potentially charge you, let's say, eight to $12 an hour. They could even be as cheap as $5 an hour um, if they're less experienced. Now, if you saw someone that who's bidding $10 an hour, it's pretty safe to assume that they're not gonna be very autonomous. If something goes wrong, their ability to think on the fly, to understand your project as a whole, understand the bigger picture of your project, um, and then to make pivots as they go is going to be limited. Thank you.